I've seen situations where the woman is done. The woman can handle the finances by herself. So she does not need the man there anymore and realizes she's not, this is not the man for her. But now out of guilt and sympathy for him, because he can't handle being out by himself or he has nowhere to go or what is he going to do? She lets him stay. Even in situations where this man is wreaking havoc, where this man is dealing with other women, I've seen it all. But because she feels like, well, I can't put him out in the streets, he don't have nowhere else to go. She lets him stay. I can go on and on and on and on. There, the bottom line is this dynamic creates an unhealthy financial attachment. And so I will say this, the, the one caveat, excuse me, you've got to have, if you're going to cross the line and let a man move in with you is, you've got to have very strict parameters and deadlines. Meaning, okay, if, if we know that I'm not, we're not seeing enough to take it to the next level of marriage, assuming that this moving in is happening, of course, before marriage, because we, I will make a point about letting him move in with you even after you get married. But if you guys realize this isn't going to go to that level, like we have to agree after six months, if it's possible, then we terminate lease or whatever, or if it's a year, but there has to be a set deadline and structure. Again, I still don't necessarily advise this. I'm just saying for those who insist because some people just really believe you got to live together to get to know each other well enough. I don't, I don't agree. And I'll explain more later, but you got to have structure in the deadline, but ultimately you got to be very careful and you've got to also make sure there is an exit strategy. Okay. It's not that we want to plan for a breakup or plan for disaster, but creating these types of financial attachments because we have not thought of how we would have to break free from this. If this does not go well, it just creates a deeper hole and a more miserable situation. So you want to make sure you know, okay, if this does not work, either he has somewhere to go or I have to be prepared to put him out without the guilt of I'm putting him out. You, you can't let that hold you in place here. That's just not good for you, not good for him. And you got to also be sure, because this is hitting my spirit. You got to be sure you're not hiding behind the guilt and sympathy when in reality, you just don't want to be alone. When in reality, you got comfortable with having a man in your bed and in your home. So now you're using that sympathy as an excuse to validate letting this joker linger way longer than he should. All right. You got to be real with yourself about why you're holding on. But either way, be careful because this is what moving in or letting him move in with you can create. All right, so now let's get to the next point. The next reason why you should not allow any man to move in with you is because there's a very good chance you're going to start to lose respect for him. All right. So this is more speaking to directly the dynamic of you have your place and he's coming to you. Now, let's be real. In the vast majority of situations where the man has to move in with the woman, it is because the woman is more established, more well set up, and the man is still trying to find himself and make things happen. All right. Now, I'm not demonizing the fact that he's in that position. What I am saying is this. If we're already starting from a dynamic where he has to work his way up and you're already at a higher level, the problem now is one. Once he is in the comfort of your home, it is very easy for him to get comfortable. It is very easy for him to lose the motivation to push harder to get his stuff together because now he got a warm bed. He got a woman by his side. For all we know, you making him food and you doing whatever else for him. He's getting regular sex. Okay. Those comforts are going to de-incentivize a lot of men from pushing harder because the reality is that many men push hard, try to strive for more so that, he can, so that they can gain the favor of a woman. When, you, when he's already getting it, what else is there for him to do? So that's one, he can get very comfortable. Two, if he's already starting from that quote unquote lower level and you're higher, even if he gets himself to a better place, 
Is it the place high enough for you to respect? All right. Because in your head, you know, it's, it's always going to be harder for an individual to, to have the same amount of reverence and respect for someone who is not working as hard to achieve what they have achieved. All right. I hope I'm saying that right. So essentially it's like, listen, when we're all struggling, we more sympathize with the struggle, right? But when we ourselves have moved past that struggle by putting in the hard work, persevering, all that stuff, we tend to now have less patience for someone else who we view as giving excuses, okay? It's one thing when just hard times has fallen on them, things that are against their control. I think we all understand that. But now when we start to see a pattern of, no, you're just not putting in the work, okay? Now that respect starts to slide. Now that resentment starts to kick in because now it's not only is he working, but in your eyes, is he working hard enough? Is he doing enough to what you feel is his potential to do? If he's not living up to that potential, again, you will st start to look down on him or you may start to look down on him. Many do. And so again, now, if he does not work himself up to the level that you can revere, we got a big problem on our hands. Then you add that to the fact that if, if getting to the level that you desire for him is too difficult in his eyes, and we combine that with he has the comforts of being in your home and all these things, well, even if he was initially willing to strive for it, now he's like, the trade-off ain't worth it. I might as well just kick back a little bit and just enjoy my, the situation I'm in right now. And again, you will find yourself having less respect for this man. And because this is your home, this is your castle that you built, you're not going to have the same, like, he's the head of the household type of mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's one thing where it's his house, you know, or a house that even you, you guys got together or rented out together, whatever. But when it's all you, and he came into you, you, your spot, again, not all women, but many women start to view that man as an a, additional child or their only child if they don't have others. All right? She, he's your son now. And that's not a good place to be, you know? Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. Relationships are the key to a successful life. But there's five areas that we have to be mindful of when it comes to relationships. There's relationship with God, relationship with ourselves, relationship with family and friends,